and welcome back to the studio. I am joined by Steve Ohm, One Chains. I'll pick that up later. And Mr. Please. Yeah. Animal. Animal Instincts, Animal Kingdom. How we doing? How you doing? We're going to do a little thanks. We're going to go through all the games, of course. We're going to go through all the players that are on, like, the flex borderline, tell you what to do, what not to do. You can probably not listen to us, but we're going to do our best to, to give you a little bit of guidance, and then we're going to do what well, we're doing A Herd of Goats. Won't be in the end of this video. It will be on our TikTok page, probably, so make sure you're following us on TikTok at BDGE2 underscores. Also... Uh, do a thumbs up and, and subscribe if you're new. We always put that at, that at the end, and I feel like that's a very bad YouTuber uh, format. We should be putting that at the front. Yeah, I mean, right? and that's yeah. our fashion, bad YouTube stuff. <laughs> Bang! Let's start the games off. All right. Um, Many the Thunder Snow game. I want to get right into it. What's the Thunder Snow game? That's the the Bills, Browns, where, where they're Wait, there's thunder and snow? Apparently, yeah, there's going to be a mixture of snow and thunderstorms causing some possible thunder snow. That's crazy. I thought They so. can't play in that, can they? <laughs> It's football weather. What do you mean? I mean, like... That's that's an anomaly. I feel like thunder comes from hot weather, no? <clears throat> I'd love to see it happen. If you own players in this game, are you scared to play them? So, let's go through those players. Uh, yeah, go it through depends them. depends on the players. If you have, I feel like, Nick Chubb or Kareem Hunt... Um, Kareem Hunt's unplayable right now. I don't know if you is looked he at any though? of his, I yes, know. literally unplayable. But you think if this is a game where there's a ton of snow, like, they're not going to have Jacoby Brissett throw it 30 times. Yeah, I mean, it's going to depend on, I guess, the, the level of, of the weather that we're getting out here. But Kareem Hunt... His last fucking four games: one point nine, seven point two, six point eight, one point two. But these are these. This is it's either he like he, he's dead and he's like you can't start him, or he's due. He's been dead for a month. He's dead. Is he dead or is he due? Let's say like that. Six or fewer carries in three of the last four yeah, games. Yeah, four Ooh. games in a row. That's death to me. That's dead. He's dead. He's Put, big. Leave dead. him on the bench. Put him I, on the bench. I get it. I don't know. He'll he'll be. You got to be real. Down bad. I'll start the I'll start the running backs that I would normally start. I'm not yeah. gonna let the weather dictate what I do with the running backs. Uh, the wide receivers. Gabe Davis is a dude that gets me a little bit nervous because he's like a downfield type of yes. guy. And I think typically if you get really bad weather, strong gusts of yeah. wind, what it affects is like the downfield throws. And Josh Allen's been a little been a little wonky lately too. He's been a little wonky. He's been a little ever since the Jets game. That's like my main point here is that a guy like Stefan Diggs, like you just gotta play him. Yeah, I mean, he's like, in the lineup no matter what. Sure. You're Diggs not going to take these guys out of your lineup just because of the weather. Sure, but what about like a guy like Donovan People jones who's been having very good like five-game streak now? I wouldn't start him on a 72 and sunny day. All right, let's move on to Nick's team, the Atlanta Falcons. What's happening? I don't know. It seems like some, something good going about out something. there. Yeah, I'm jealous. Kind of want to ditch this whole podcast. <laughs> yeah. kind of, Chicago Bears versus the Atlanta Falcons. Um, Justin Fields been on a total tear. You have to start him. Not going to talk about any more quarterbacks. But the running backs here. Khalil Herbert headed to the IR. We got David Montgomery. Uh, obviously a start. Tristan Ebner. Not really much to talk about here. But is he a guy that if you're, you know, you have bye weeks or something like that. Yeah. You, you, are you going to start him? Because Khalil was okay. He was he had a couple of big games. Still wasn't getting a lot of work and targets and, and involvement. But I guess go off, Steve. Me personally, I don't have much to say about Tristan Ebner. I just you know so much. That I you just don't, even don't know where have to start, much right? to say about Tristan Ebner. I mean, when it comes down to it, what is he third string? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a far, far third string. Yeah. It's, my problem, my problem, I think with Ebner is that I think maybe people expect him to get like a pass catching role here. But the Bears haven't really been a team that's like, oh, we want to divvy up uh, pass catching roles to this guy or whatever. Where it's like our best runner is going to be out there, and we're going to give him carries. And like if he catches balls, he catches balls. Like Demont catches a ton of balls when he's out there, so I wouldn't. He'll probably operate yeah, as a Justin workhorse. Fields will, his check down is basically a run at this point. So yeah. yeah, he's dropping back. He's thinking run first. I mean, it's the Falcons' defense, so anything can happen. But like Ebner, I think you're probably getting a little too cute if he's in your lineup. Well, here's what I would ask you. Too soon. Um, Here's how. Yeah, I'll you can ask. You can ask. Like, don't be. I was trying to see like, like, if there's a good one, um, but there's really not. Like Tristan, Tristan Abner, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire. Jesus Christ, it's crazy because it should be Clyde. Not even thinking no, about Clyde it. Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, he can get zero carries. He can suck an egg. That dude sucks. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't suck. He can suck an egg. He doesn't suck. I've never heard that. It's before. just they don't use him. They don't use him. Like talking from, he's on my team this year. Like great start to the season. Awesome mm -hmm. offense. They're gonna score a bunch. But now it's like they're just not using him. What are you going to do? I, I guess in practice they see that Pacheco is playing a lot better. I don't know why they would use him over Clyde over Tolaire because he's Clyde great. Clyde stinks. He can, yeah. he can suck I an guess. egg. I, he can suck I need to see egg. someone suck an egg now. What I need to know more about is the running back situation because I have both players on the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, okay. I think I'm going to go Clyde there. Yeah, you think you have to. Yeah, just because he might. It's egregious. The chances of him getting like a goal line carry are not really crazy. Yeah. Fuck. That's like their upside that's is ugly. probably the same, which is nuts. But all right. Uh, yeah, the other side of the uh, the yeah, ball Patterson here. Patterson or Algier. I spent money on Algier picking him up. 
He didn't have a great week last week. I think they're both good plays this week. I think they've, like, split the opportunities really evenly. Okay. And uh, I think both of them have have some talent there. Okay, interesting. I play both of them in the flex. I I would say the only thing that's a little um, weird to me was the target share that uh, Algier got over Patterson, which you would have expected to be otherwise. It's not crazy. Like, Patterson uh, ran 12 routes and uh, Algier ran 14. Well, it's kind of like, do you remember the end of last year? Cordell was awesome in the beginning of the year, like catching passes, being the workhorse, and then they only used him on early downs, and they stopped using him on passing downs. Same coach, same stretch of the year. You know, like, it could be the same thing. I don't know why Tyler Algier would be that guy. He's not, like, a fantastic pass catcher, but, like, I I just think they'll both get similar opportunities, you know? Yeah, the red zone opportunities make no sense to me. We're also looking at an old veteran versus a young gun. You know what I'm saying? The old guy, they're going to, you know, take away a couple carries from him, keep his body fresh. I don't know for what, because they're not making the playoffs. What do you mean? We're one game out of division lead. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. One game out of division wow. lead, and he ranks us 31st on the power rankings. <laughs> really? so you guys are going to just go on a yeah. terrible losing streak right now. Who's We're playing the, Chicago. Who's yeah, getting the lose. carries between those two guys inside? Say they have the ball at the three-yard line. Who's getting the carry? Caleb Huntley. <laughs> Which is uh, like... Caleb Huntley's a, a nice bruiser. I think Corderell probably gets the goal line work if, yeah. if they do it. But it okay. might just be one of those things like whoever's on the field at the time, which is what makes the backfield tricky here. Yeah, that's know? annoying for fantasy-wise. Yeah. Wide receivers for this one. Darnell Mooney is a guy that you probably have to start. Uh, you don't feel great about it, but you're going to start him. Chase Claypool is a guy that I don't think we're starting yet. No. Um, uh, last week, Claypool only ran seven routes. So, yeah, that's that's going to be a no for me, dog. All he's, right. he's a guy you need to see, like, a big game from before you even think about putting him in your lineup. Here's a trick yeah. you want. Sure, Steve. Claypool, he's a good guy. Just went out to lunch with him once. <laughs> uh, we're just bros. I got to hit him up, actually. But, no, nah, I don't know. I don't, I don't like to play any receiver. Tell him to run more fucking routes. Yeah, no. I don't like to, I don't like to play any receiver from Chicago. That's, that's a rule of mine for the last, like, three, four, five years. That would have worked out well for um, you. Yeah. So, Ooh. Atlanta, though, has a receiver that is kind of – been frustrating this season drake london uh, a lot of talent there but not a lot of production yeah i mean you don't feel good about putting him in your lineup um i i will i will if i need to so um, here's where i ask you drake london Kadarius tony tony drake london christian watson 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 sorry i cut you off on that last nah, one that's okay i was gonna say tony also uh oh, drake geez. london or darnell mooney same game hmm. drake london Mooney. <laughs> <laughs> you don't win or lose anything. <laughs> You'll probably be right on all of these. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. I think Drake London's a guy, like you said, if you need to start him, you start him. If you have better options, um, I guess you got to go with those better options, even though, yeah. Damn. The only the only league I'm starting him in is like a dynasty league where he was like one of my first. It was a startup last year um, or the beginning of the year or whatever when, it was, when he was a rookie. And, you know, he was one of my top picks. So it's like he's one of the wide receivers that I kind of need to throw in. And I hate it. Over under in that game is 49 and a half. So they're expecting some scoring there too. Like I said, it's going to be a haymaker. Yeah. 52 um, to 46. Falcons take away that win. The tight ends in this game are, are very interesting because Kyle Pitts is, uh, you know, supposed to be the guy, but Cole Komet is actually playing like the guy. So obviously we start Cole Komet. I think he's hot. He's got the heart. He's got the hot hand. Justin Fields has been has been targeting him in the end zone. You go Komet over Pitts. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm Not even close. Too. Yeah, it's definitely close. I was definitely gonna close. give you, I was gonna give you a Pitts, um, like Pitts or someone, because I feel like it, it Komet's probably ranked higher than Pitts, right? Yeah, they're 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 actually super. Su- I don't know what the ECR says. But I was doing the rankings today, and they start off with like their base ones. Um, it's it's fucking close for sure. Pitts gets, uh, has just a lot of games where he gets like yeah. eight nine targets, which you don't see for a lot of tight ends. He just never does. But he gets three three catches on those nine yeah, targets, and they're for twenty yards. So Kyle Pitts or Pat Firemuth. Should go Pat, but I'm I'm getting sucked into the pit again. I'm getting sucked into yeah, the I'm pit. Yeah, I'm going with Pitts. Too much talent. Like you got to keep those guys on the field. All right, Kyle Pitts or Greg Dolce de Leche. I have Pitts seven, Pat eight, Dolch nine. I have the same. <laughs> <laughs> All right, love to hear it, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the Falcons, and that is the um, who's that other team? Uh, Bears. Falcons. Bears. We're done. The Bears. Eagles versus Colts. Uh, Eagles coming off a, a big loss, and they also lost Dallas Goddard. So maybe uh, Devonta Smith will finally get some some extra targets, which would be nice. How we feel about Devonta Smith now, or even just this whole receiving core now that Dallas Goddard's gone? Because he was a big part. Yeah, I, I think that helps him the most probably. I'm, I'm kind of on like all the guys you should be starting in this game, I think. Yeah, we don't really need to talk much about the Eagles. You're going to start all their players. Uh, you're going to start Miles Sanders. You're going to start A.J. Brown. You're going to start Devonta Smith. At 8-1, and one, are the Eagles frauds, you think? Or do you yeah. think they'll be, they're frauds? I think they're big i think they've been frauds all year i don't think so that's a conversation for another day uh if they're not healthy it becomes a little problematic for them but i think pound for pound just talent everyone healthy they're a really really elite team they're a good team they're top five but they're just not gonna i don't see them i don't see them winning any uh like nfc championship games this year okay in this in this game um if you have jonathan taylor now new coach you know jeff saturday 
kind of shaking things up a bit, put Matt Ryan back in. Do we love Jonathan Taylor now? I know he sucked the whole year. Everyone's hated him. He's been the universal number one pick, and he's pretty much breaking everyone's hearts, ruining everyone's fantasy teams. Are you? Do you feel comfortable playing him as, as an RB1 this week? Yes, mm-hmm. GOAT this week. Especially this week Is against he the back, Eagles. though? Like, should I trade for him in my other leagues? The I don't one know about kid, that. This is like a perfect storm situation. It feels like where Philly's getting chewed up on the ground recent weeks just because their D tackles are hurt, and yeah. now Jonathan Taylor just kind of had a, had his explosive week. So you're just like, he's back. They're the opposite of back. Let's fucking clap yeah. cheeks. Yeah, for sure. But I'm saying, yeah, should I, I trade for it. him? Like going no. on the past this week? I, I, not. I would not. I think this is one of those scenarios where you get the new head coach. Everyone's fired up. You get like one week. I think they actually already had their week where they yeah. just won. This is a game where I don't like the Colts at all, but I love Jonathan Taylor. Colts are like, a shipwreck. Otherwise. Yeah, like. He, Jonathan Taylor's gonna he's gonna get the rock. He's gonna get twenty carries. He's gonna he's gonna do well against that uh, Eagles uh, run defense that has been very bad without Jordan Davis. They've been really bad. Thoughts about the receivers because Pittman gets the high targets whenever Matt Ryan's on the field. They have just been few and far between in terms of like turning it into big games. Philly's cornerbacks, Bradbury Slay, are really fucking good on the outside too. Paris Campbell's been great with Matt Ryan. I love Paris Campbell. I think I'd be playing both of them. I think both of them are top thirty options for yeah. me. I have no issues with either of them. I don't know. Matt Ryan has a wet noodle arm. He's, I think he's past his prime, obviously. For sure. You think so? I, <laughs> <laughs> I, he's not even up for you don't think he's, you don't no, think he he's competing for the league motion. MVP he's this like year? He's like one of those quarterbacks. There's two quarterbacks, Matt Ryan and um, the quarterback for the Commanders, the backup. What's Tyler the Heineke? No, the, I mean the starter. Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz. Just fucking so annoying to watch these guys play football. They move in slow motion. They get sacked a lot. They can't get out of the way. I would not play him. I would not play any receivers from their team. All wow. right. So I'm me, sorry. I'm just I'm sorry I'm being you, hard on um, him. Paris Campbell or Allen Robinson? Allen Robinson. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Allen Robinson, but without Cooper Cup, somebody's got to get it. Somebody's got to get those catches. It's the smartest thing you've ever said. <laughs> Mike, that, Michael that. Pittman or Devonta Smith? Smith. Steven? Um, Smith. For sure, Smith. M- Michael Pittman or your Garrett Wilson? Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Corey Davis is going to be back this yeah, week. Yeah, Corey think, Davis right? is back. Nice, nice. Yeah, Corey Davis is back, so I don't know. I, I don't have a comment on that. Sick. Should be me saying nice to you. Like you being like, Corey Davis is back, so you can be like, nice, Yeah, dude. yeah. <laughs> Not the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Jets, Patriots. Steve, you are a local expert in this uh, scenario yeah, here. Yeah, J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Michael Carter. Michael Carter. How how do we feel about Michael Carter now as a legitimate our, our, uh, legitimate running back? I believe so, but I mean, also now that James Robinson is there, I mean, I think they'll kind of do a little bit of a split. He got James Robinson got a lot more action last week or two weeks ago than I was expecting. I think they probably like him, that means, a lot. He'll be in more on the passing downs. He'll be catching the ball. I was surprised by that. Me too. Um, Pissed me off. Did, Did it piss you off? Piss me off, yeah. Yeah. Did they I, have the exact same rushing attempts? Mm-hmm. I think I'll still start Carter because I have him. I like Carter. And I need yeah, I like him. He had a big um, game last week. I think he, he's just gonna catch a lot of passes and that'll be his fucking role. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is the kryptonite for the Jets obviously is the Patriots. I know that Belichick pretty much stops. To be fair, game. everything was a kryptonite to them over the last like <laughs> seventeen years. We're back now, baby. <laughs> Here's an interesting stat, though, for this you. Is a tough question. Since week five, the Patriots have allowed the second highest yards per reception to running backs. Shit. And Carter is getting 13.8% of the target share. Yeah. He's I, running 13 and a half routes in a game. Carter, I feel good about Carter yeah. in my lineup. All right. So we're moving on to the Patriots running backs. Where we got Ramondre Stevenson, who obviously is a full go. I feel like there's no reason to even talk about him. Yeah, Damian Harris, if you have him, what do you do with him? Do you start him? How can you after the last two two weeks? You don't start him. You tweet angry things at him, <laughs> motherfucker. Do you, do that's, you, that's a great. Any you start? Like do you start him? You don't start him. You tweet angry yeah, things. Yeah, you fucking at him. tweet at Damian him. Harris or James Robinson. James Robinson. I think I might go Harris. Damian Harris or Kareem Hunt. Damian Harris. We already said we're Harris. not going to start Kareem Hunt. All right, last one. Damian Harris, Tyler Algier. Algier. Algier is the only one that's of that entire bunch one. that I actually like. Yeah, that's, that's the easiest one. Like he'll be like good. Damian Harris is like it, it feels like the Patriots wouldn't just give the work away to Stevenson. Like, they just anointed him the starter. It kind of feels like Harris is coming back from the injury, so they were, like, getting him slowly involved. Now they had the bye. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw, like, a real split again this week, but I also would be, I guess. I still think, yeah, Ramondre is going to get the edge on the passing work at least, so. Yeah, I think it might be a little receiving. bit closer overall, though, in terms of work. All right, we just mentioned him briefly before. Garrett Wilson, uh, wide receiver for the Jets, 14th in PFF receiving grade, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. I think the Jets are going to want to run the ball, you know, go off play action. Uh, I could see probably, I don't know, five catches, 64 yards. Well, here's what I was going to say. Garrett Wilson and Jacoby Myers are kind of like the two big guys in this uh, game. Garrett Wilson or Jacoby Myers. 
Myers. Who Jacoby you starting? Myers. Really? No, 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 no. I was just saying Jacoby Myers, question mark. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even know the fucking Patriots had a wide receiver. Oh, I would uh, never play a Patriots wide receiver either. No, Myers Myers has been good. I, I'll take. I'll give the slight edge to Wilson, though. I think they're both for sure startable. I don't know if I'd like... Th- this is one of those games where we're going to look at the box score, and I feel like we're going to have no idea like how the game played itself out that way. Like it, Unpredictable in terms of production. Agree or disagree? Agree. Agree. Or I mean, a hard medium. Yeah, I think it's going to be a low-scoring game, obviously. I'm looking like a 17-13 game Jets win. Jeez. But, um, it doesn't make me feel good about starting any of the players. Doesn't no, seem like that's what I'm saying. I don't think you should start many players. All right, so Garrett Wilson or Rondell Moore? Rondell Moore. He's been hot lately. Uh, whose quarter is... Uh, what's his face back? It's not... Um, Confirm. Kyler Murray, is he back? I, have, I, I believe he, he's going to play. Rondell Moore there. Yeah, Rondell Moore there. Because Ertz is out, and now it's so condensed. Feels good, but unsure for status. He's just not has, He's not going to say, yeah, he's a bitch. Um, all right, Garrett Wilson or DJ Moore? Wilson. Wilson. Wilson! Wilson! What movie is that from? Castaway? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, is that like wait. a test? Or yeah, it was a test. test. Oh. I didn't know. I didn't know what you were doing there. All right, uh, no tight ends from this matchup. Tyler Conklin? Yeah. All right. You can find better. All right, so that's it for the Jets, Patriots. Let's move over to the Rams, Saints, possibly two of the worst teams in the NFL right now. They're bad. Really disappointing. Uh, apparently, the Saints are going to be rolling out Andy Dalton again. Why? Oh, a little weird. That? Why yeah, are they doing official. that? What he the is. fuck? Why? What's wrong with Jameis? What's wrong with crab legs, man? Have you watched him play ever? I, at least I agree. It's, I think Winston should be entertaining and fun. You don't have yeah. to watch another, like, over-the-hill redhead play quarterback. I agree. Yeah, I'd rather so. have Winston out there, but Stafford's Dalton. Stafford's supposed to be back. So this was the one quarterback I wanted wanted to mention um Andy Dalton or Matt Ryan who are you going with this week if you got to start one I'd leave that position I'm <laughs> leaving that position blank people are in this scenario I'm man. gonna go Matt Ryan I, I just I think he's obviously the better option yeah he has way more upside I just have a weird good feeling about Ryan this week yeah I like his upside at least the fact that he has weapons that can do something even he if ripped he off a fucking touchdown 39 yeah. yard touchdown run I think yeah. he's I think he's back to his prime again <laughs> I think he's better. <laughs> I think he's better than his prime. <laughs> um, the running backs for this game are... Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Alvin Kamara, who we have no problem with. But I, got, I got problems with him. Yeah, no, I, got, got I got fucking problems I got personal with problems. I got him on my team. He's fucking annoying. You I tell you what. You him, you tweet at him. He's, yeah, if you don't start him, you tweet at him. I've been tweeting at him, asshole. Listen, Alvin Kamara, like, oh, he's uh, RB1, RB1, RB1. He doesn't play like it. I don't... Also like that um, Andy Dalton's the quarterback. I don't think it brings any – it doesn't bring any juice to the team. He needs a little juice. He needs to be catching screens. He needs to, like, have the ball inside the red zone. It's just not going to happen with yeah, Andy Dalton. Yeah, he sucks. He's juiceless. I'm he's, trying to, he's an empty carton. No juice. An empty carton. I'm literally trying to trade him away in every every league right now. If you look ahead, which as, as of right now you should be in fantasy football, if you look ahead to your final three, four weeks, he is a, a treacherous a treacherous go at it. <laughs> treacherous. It's treacherous. First of all, he's a week 14 bye. And then after that, he's playing three great defense. I think he has, he's playing like Tampa Bay. I, I just think you need to get him off your team at this point. Try and trade him on name value only. He just had a good week. Like good week trade two deadline weeks ago. It was like a week or two. No, it's this week, actually. Yeah. It's I think this it's week. Yeah, this week it's or this week. next. I'm just saying, if you can get rid of him, extended. get rid of him. You're not going to want to deal with his bullshit. If they're starting Andy Dalton, they're kind of giving up. Do they, they have a horrible record, right? The Saints? Yeah. They're like. They're going to fucking give up. You have to like foresee a lot of these teams with a little older players that like they're just not going to try at the end of the season. And that's why I'm getting rid of them. Get the fuck out of here, Kamara. Get the fuck out, Alvin. All right. Um, you convinced me. Right? I Alvin Kamara. Kamara. I'd be buying him. Alvin Kamara or Daryl Henderson? Oh, all right. I thought you were going to say the other guy. <laughs> you got to say Alvin. Alvin Kamara. All right. He still loves him, baby. No. He still loves Alvin. All right. But I need to throw a grievance out there, too. Cam Akers, what the fuck are you doing? I mean, I mean, if you're still like looking for something yeah. out of Cam Akers, well, I mean, not, I, dra- look, I drafted him in all my league. No, I'm just saying how fucking useless he is. Yeah. I'm saying if you're still complaining about that 10 weeks into the season, like, where are you right now? I, I, well, I, I mean, I drafted him early, so I like you hold on to him because you're like, oh, eventually he will be the starter there. They'll like get over their tiff, and then one day he will be getting all the carries there. But they just, they just not. Are but not you don't. Good. You don't think at that point in the season where they're like, he's not on our team anymore. I should probably cut him. No, because I thought he was going to get traded, and then he's back. I'm going to keep him. He gets a couple carries, but I just thought that at one point. It was they were just going to be like, all right, let's fucking give him all the carries. And I knew that the second I dropped him, the second I dropped him, it would happen. No, he's dust. Yeah, he's, he's dust. Up. I'm more interested in Kyron Williams, bro. He, yeah. um, Kyron Williams came back last week, first game, caught a lot of passes. I think he caught three passes. Was pretty explosive with it. They need something like that at the backfield without Cooper Cup. It's like gets a little, gets a little funky where the targets are yeah, going to be I distributed. Mean, he ran ten routes versus Cam Akers three. 
So, yeah. like, they're already getting him more involved. It's, yeah, right, so Acres he's dead. Is good. So dead. he's dead. Acres, yeah, is, Acres dead. is done. Henderson, um, you might get one more week out of him, even though it won't be a good week, but I think Kyron's coming for the job. Who's more useless, Clyde Edwards Hilaire <laughs> or Cam Akers? Who would you rather fucking just I, punch in the face Akers if they were standing in front of you? Just, like, yeah. obliterate them. Akers yeah. is more useless? Yeah, I'd yeah. rather start Clyde and I'd rather fight Akers. <laughs> so you're saying that Akers <laughs> Oh, I'd rather to... fight Clyde. If we're, like, talking about who I have to fight in real life, Akers is a big motherfucker. Well, you get to win. It's not like they don't fight back. Oh. Yeah. No, they uh, fight. They fight back. Clyde Edwards is fair. short and stocky. He's like a bull. He's like a little bull. They're both killing They're all. Both. Of us. It's not like, mean, yeah. I'm not like Cam I think Akers I have better... is just a stretched out version of Clyde. Yeah, Cam, I'm going to go for an ankle pick. That's the only thing I have. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I think we're losing that fight nine out of ten times. I, I agree. All right, you know who lost a fight? Who? Cooper Cup. Ooh, he lost a fight. You had to, to bring up Cooper Cup. Yeah, he lost a fight big he, time. He did. And he did. now, well, he have... was sucking before that. Well, let's be. Let's not. That's he insane was insane to say. That's crazy. He had one point five points that. Well, game. Well, yeah, that I'm game. saying that. Oh, game. you're just saying it. Okay. No, yeah, he's not, my hero. Not in general. He's, he's I was like, yo, he literally has like twenty points every. Season. I love him. I literally love that dude. All right, so no, Cooper but I'm Cup. saying is like he had one point. What was it, John Wolford? Yeah. Yeah. Eh, all right, so he had his backup quarterback that game. I forgive the guy because I love him. But who's filling that void? Well, no one's going to fill it, but what do you do if you have an, an Allen Robinson or a Van Jefferson or like a Ben Skoranek? I these feel, are the, the guys, the next men up. It's like you could play Robinson, I guess, but I'm not going to get overly excited about it. He's going to see uh, the Saints. The Saints have no pass rush. I don't even know what the Saints are. They have no identity. I can't even really speak like they are terrible at this. They're good at this. They're not really good at anything. Yeah, they're um, a question mark. Robinson is whatever. He's like a f- low end wide receiver three for me. No way Jefferson gets in my lineup. I do. I, I think I would put Ben Skoranek in, in a lineup or two if I needed to. Like I yeah. could throw him into a, a flex play if we start three wide receivers and need a flex or something like that. I think he'll end up with like seven or eight targets. Hopefully he gets into the end zone. Maybe he uses his fingertips to catch balls. You know, about like a, like a Ben Skoranek or an Alec Pierce. Uh, I'll take Ben Skoranek just because of the matchup. I don't like. I don't like that Philly matchup for him. Ben Skoranek or Traylon Burks. He's Skoranek. playing. He's playing on Thursday, but I would take. I would take B. All ben, right, Benny B. I'll, uh, don't be asking me Thursday night questions. I, I didn't realize it until after. Um, trying to make me look I love, like a fool. I love Traylon. Right love Traylon. Without Cup moving the chains in this game, and with Andy Dalton as quarterback, this is another low-scoring game. I think I'm going to try and shy away from everything in this game. I mean, obviously, if you have what's his fate, uh, if you have Alvin Kamara, you got to play him. It's yeah. another low-scoring game. It's just going to be a fugly game. Yeah, outside of Chris Olave, you're not going to start any of the Saints' pass catchers. Juwan Johnson, though, is a little interesting because he's not uh, he's not getting enough targets to like make you want to start him, but he's getting enough touchdowns <laughs> to make you want to start him. Uh, it's a tight end position. It's very um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, dead. Bad. Like, yeah, it's very bad. And you got a guy like Juwan Johnson. Um, let me see if I can get a good comparison for you. I don't think the tight end position is necessarily that bad. I feel like he's a worse version of most of the dudes. Like when you get to like the eight, nine, 10, 11 range, you're looking at Firemuth, Dolchich, Komet, you know, Foster Moreau, Trey McBride, Hayden Hurst, like those dudes. I feel like he kind of just lumps into the end of that category because he's not like good enough to produce on his own if he doesn't get a touchdown. It's another guy. It's like you could do better. Here's probably. one where uh, it's, it could be a little tricky. Trey McBride or Jawan Johnson. I'm going to take McBride there. Because there's the uncertainty, the mystery of what, what you could get versus yeah. Jawan Johnson, you know what you're going to get. Well, you know McBride's basically playing every snap now that Ertz is out, you know? So I, f- I feel good enough that he's going to be on the field. All right, Jawan Johnson or the other tight end in this matchup is Tyler Higby. Yeah, no, that's not a, that's not a thing. <laughs> I don't know. You never know. All right. Uh, Detroit Lions versus New York Giants. Quarterbacks not going to talk about. Uh, the running backs, though, mainly for the Lions. Jamal Williams was a DNP on Wednesday. He's dealing with an illness. We think he's going to be okay to play. It's fine. You start Jamal. I'm not a doctor, Saquon. but yeah, he'll play. He might. We start Just Saquon. We start CCS Swift. Uh, wide yeah. receivers, Amon Ra. No, 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 hold, hold, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. What? No, you don't just start Swift. He's like four carries every Yeah, he game. starts Swift. I'm, I'm not starting Swift. To tell you the truth, if I had Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift, I think I'm starting Jamal Williams. Of Is course. That well, yeah, that's obvious. Who, who are you starting Swift over? Are you starting, who are you starting over Swift? Like Najee Harris. Five guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think them, they're back-to-back. Dude, have you seen Swift has been... We've been but saying to sit Swift last three weeks. He's got five carries a game. He's, he's not playing he's at all. Have he's hurt. To get more carries. Like I have, he's either I, not I, hurt or he's hurt. I got Harris twenty eight. I got Swift to twenty nine. So I have Harris over him. All right. One guy got four carries last week. One guy got twenty. Pacheco or Swift? Pacheco, easy. Pacheco. Pacheco. Isaiah Pacheco. James Connor or Swift? Connor. Yeah. James Connor. Melvin Gordon or Swift? I'll take Swift there. Elijah Mitchell or Swift? 
Mitchell. Damn. Yeah, maybe we... You know what it is? It's just Swift is too good to fucking... Swift is far, like, very not in auto start right now. I get it. Like, eventually he's going to have one of his games where you're like, okay, he's finally yeah. healthy again. But, like, I don't want to keep putting him into my lineup to try to figure out whether or not. Because it's it's so obvious. They come out, say he's not healthy, and then give him three carries. Like, yeah. you don't you don't split carries with Justin Jackson if you're DeAndre Swift unless you're really banged up. You no, know? that's fair. That's fair. Do you think Jamal Williams was the waiver wire pickup of the year if you got him on the waiver wire? I feel like some people... I feel like a good amount of people probably drafted him. He was yeah, definitely pretty, late, pretty drafted. I w- if he was available on the waiver wire and his pickup, yeah, for sure. He's, yeah. He's he could be. Out there. Waiver wire pickup of the year. I'm on Ra. You start. Uh, what about Darius Slayton? Yeah, that's an interesting one. I feel like you have to start him because he's kind of the only guy on the Giants who can catch the ball, and uh, it's the Detroit Lions defense, so there should be plenty of opportunity. Yeah, I, I would. Uh, I throw Slayton into my wide receiver three slot. He's made a lot of big plays down the field, and this is an offense that could certainly be fucking. We could take a dump on him. They could start right, Darius Slayton or Allen Robinson. I'll take Slayton there. I think I would, too. Yeah, I'll take Slayton. I think there's more upside with Slayton, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, one big play from Slayton, and you basically just outproduce Allen Robinson. Yeah, exactly. Every time. Yeah, real quick, last question on that. Are the Giants good? Better. I go in <sighs> thinking they suck every week, and then they, like, win, and they're winning games, they're and they're good. playing good defense, and their coach I actually kind of like. They're good. They're a good team. They, um, they're, they're, they're lacking the sexy superstar. Yeah aspect but they're a good team they saquon's playing lights out yeah i mean, I mean that's their sex superstar but yeah. like you know, they, it's eight a running two? back so eight and two seven and three seven and, maybe i don't know, I don't know. it's close though but i mean just daniel jones is playing good football when he's healthy and he can run he, there's seven that's another element yeah. he's he's a uh, if you're in a one quarterback league is daniel jones a starting quarterback yeah 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 against uh, the lions most yeah. weeks yeah most weeks yes yeah there's just there's seven and two i think if they played a normal schedule i think if they played like league average or even like a you know top 14 schedule. Mm-hmm. I think they're five and five. Probably. I don't think they're seven and two. Damn. Good. What do you want to move on? Panthers. Ravens. Panthers. Ravens. Panthers. Ravens. You're starting Lamar. You're not starting Baker, which is going to be an atrocity. How do you guys feel about Deonta Foreman? He's been awesome. He had one bad game, yeah. but then he bounced back last week. Had a monster game again. Going against Baltimore. I think my first thought is like tough defense, but Foreman's a dude I'm just bought in on talent wise. So I think I'm just going to start him and, and not really worry about the, the defensive matchup. Yeah, it's a volume thing thing for me too. Like it says here, uh, since week seven, he's averaged twenty point eight touches. So like yeah. it's just the fact that he's Crazy. getting yeah. yeah, and he's it's, been. It's, it's not volume. even like yeah, he's good on them. He's not Najee Harris, right? He's like he's making explosive of plays on the flip side Gus Edwards is finally back at practice Kenyon Drake has been pretty fucking good in his absence though mm-hmm. so I'm I'm kind of concerned about what that I mean it's always a committee there I'd in be hesitant to just throw Gus right into my lineup right away with the fact that Drake's been playing well and uh would maybe you they start wanna... Drake though somewhere if I need to at a flex yeah yeah you would start Drake over Gus yeah, probably. It's 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 uh, you know you you don't know what to expect with the, the amount of workload that they're going to give them. But I just feel like Drake's been playing too well to just all of a sudden to just stop giving him. You know, it's enough. like how it always feels in Baltimore, and then the next week they just don't care. Yeah, it's just like whoever they they really just ride the hot hand there. Uh, wide receivers is uh, DJ Moore. I don't know, dude. DJ Moore's a tough one because talent wise, you want to start him. Borderline feels unplayable to me with Baker under center. It's been bad. I don't know if I'm starting any of the Carolina wide receivers. No, no way. So I know I'm going ahead a little bit, but with Mark Andrews hurt now, right? Is Mark Andrews out for the week? I no. feel like he's definitely going to be out. He just didn't. All he right. didn't practice on Wednesday. All right. I know the trade deadline's coming up. I already talked about doing some trades. Are you selling Lamar Jackson at the trade deadline? He started off the season so hot, so hot. I'm not against. I'm not against it. And he hasn't been playing well. I wonder sometimes if, like, you know, one, I know he's been on tape a bunch for coaches, but. Once the coaches see and they know how to stop him, you know, they drop, I don't know, two safeties or whatever they do with him. They spy him or whatever. He hasn't been great. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a, a game plan. Like, I think you could sell him on his name at this point and get someone great. I mean, the problem is, like, I don't think teams have figured it out. It's just the his team hasn't, he has nothing to work with again for, like, the fourth straight year. It's yeah. Mark Andrews or nobody. And that's what I'm saying. Losing Mark Andrews, you know, he'll be a little dinged up. Even if he comes back, he's dinged up. I'm selling him. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, yeah, I definitely wouldn't be against it. It's kind of the same situation for Justin Herbert. It's like a guy can't be that good if he just doesn't have his best yeah. weapons. There's nowhere to fucking throw the ball You're to. You're absolutely right. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm fine selling Lamar if people are still trying to buy him. Devin DuVernay had a terrible game as, like, the wide receiver won his first game as it. Any chance of a bounce back here? I just don't trust him enough. Like, if you absolutely need to put him in there, sure, it's a better option than probably a lot out there. But, I mean, I, I like, Devin, I look, I'd rather start Nico Collins. I'd rather start uh, maybe uh, not DeAndre Carter because I think Williams and um, Keenan are coming back. I don't, I don't think Williams is going to be back. No, just Keenan. I don't think either of them are, honestly are. I saw be. a Twitter report, so maybe they lied. But yeah, there's like a lot of they guys that do. I think I would rather 
start over Devin Duvernay. Like, I probably better start Paris Campbell. He, re- he broke my trust last week, yeah, for like sure. Yeah, Darius Slayton, like all the guys we just talked about. Yeah, for the tight ends, Duvernay. Andrews, you're playing if he plays. If he doesn't, likely goes into your lineup. You talked about Nico Collins, so we'll head over to the Houston game. Uh, you're starting Damian Pierce, obviously. You're starting Terry McLaurin, obviously. The wide receivers get kind of murky out there outside of these guys because you do have Nico Collins you have Cooks opening the week with a DMP you like Collins a lot so he's like he's in your lineup this week yes okay you like Collins a lot Um, he did have a big week last week played on like 80% of the snaps yeah I guess uh I guess I I probably got to get a little bit higher on him you're playing Nico over Curtis Samuel yes interesting okay oh wait because the uh, that's tough because the commanders are playing the Texans Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, Samuel could get some extra carries this week. I kind of like Samuel a little bit more than Nico. Yeah. yeah very I, little bit. I wouldn't fault you for that. The, very little bit. The running backs in Washington break up. This is crazy. Rushing attempts, 26 for Robinson, 14 for Gibson. Routes run, 18 for Gibson, 0 for Robinson. Yeah. Robinson just not going to ever catch a ball. Very clear, <laughs> defined roles here. I'm I'm comfortable starting both of them. I Again, am too. They both got into the end zone. They're both getting volume. They're both playing against Houston. You have a preference on one of them? Gibson, just because he's catching the ball. He's getting half the carries, sure, but he's also getting those those pass-catching opportunities, which in uh, fantasy can be worth, you know, half PPR leagues is already worth more. And just the fact that, like, I don't know, uh, open field, being in the open field, I feel like there's always a little more opportunity for these guys to get in the end zone. So. I like Heineke, just to chime in. Heineke, he he's forgot, probably forgot the league's there, best, Steve. probably the league's best backup. I hate that dude. Why? Oh, because he like wears a headband and he got all like jazzed up last nah, week. I just think he, I don't know. I just think he sucks. I think he sucks. And he, yeah, I, I hated that For he was like fu- he was going crazy that he got like hit at the end of the play. Yeah, he acted like he made a big play. I'm like dude. that play was bullshit. Yeah, it's that is. Rules, you, has, yeah. Have you ever seen anyone take a knee in the middle of a drop back? Yeah, that was f- fucking unbelievable. That's ridiculous. Yeah, and then he got really so, excited about so that. Heads up, play. The fuck up. Heads it up play. A heads up play taking a knee in the middle of a scramble? Won him the game. I guess. I was, I don't know Sealed about Sealed the game. That. The Jesus. knee didn't win him the game. Well, yeah, taking a knee and the, yeah. the, the penalty oh, following look, it. The penalty. Ball, let me take yeah. a knee. No, I was yeah, They had plenty of time to stop. Also, I do like Brandon Cooks this week. I think he's a great player. I think David Mills can air it out when they need to. He actually caught a touchdown pass last week. I got called back for holding on the offensive line. So The problem with him is he didn't practice. I know he, like, he's got like a wrist thing going on. I just feel like he has like no desire to really be a part of this team. Right now. I just think it's like an old man. I thing. like him as a talent and everything. I just yeah. don't see. I think it's Nico time in 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 Houston. Okay. I'm not even trying to sound like the you know I love Nico Collins. Like yeah. I think it's actually just he's starting to actually take over that role. Okay. Yeah, Cooks might be cooked yeah. altogether. So are the Denver Broncos. We move over to oh, Carr Wilson. Um, not starting Carr. Don't hate Wilson. I guess nice. against the Raiders yeah. secondary. It's a good. It's a good chance for him to maybe get that offense going. Um, it every week. Any worry about? Yeah, it's what week is it at this point? Seriously, <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'll tell you what, Russ still has more bathrooms than touchdowns. <laughs> I saw that. Uh, one of their TikTok or whatever. He has more what? He has more bathrooms in his house than touchdown passes. This <laughs> year. That's funny. Has he? Has he had like any big? He's had one like decent fantasy game. Yeah, and it wasn't even like I think he had like twenty three points, like he had twenty six points or something like that. It wasn't even good. Why do you think he sucks? Because he's a goober and no one wants to play with yeah, him. Yeah, twenty six. So you think it's beyond football? Yeah, I mean it's a lot to do with it's coaching and the play calling and other stuff that you know I can't go into right now. But yeah, yeah it's you know okay. There's, there's a lot of things. Yeah, so you're starting Jacobs. I'm assuming you're not starting anyone in the Denver backfield unless you're really fucking out of it. Yeah, it's like you have to... And the Gordon's is, playable, I think. He gets enough targets. It's probably it. Like, Latavius Murray, maybe get the goal line work, but, like, that's if you're in a super deep league. And, I mean, I wouldn't want to. Um, Melvin Gordon or Brian Robinson. Brian Robinson. Mm-hmm. Brian. Even, yeah. There's really no one I would want to actually, like, start Melvin Gordon over. So. Melvin Gordon or James Robinson? Melvin Gordon. I would do the same. Uh, you're starting Adams, obviously. Judy, if he plays, you play him. If he doesn't, then Sutton's fucking wheels up. No one else you want to start there. I think both of the uh, tight ends Dolce are... De Leche, yeah. Both of the tight ends are definitely startable. Greg Dolchich and Foster Moreau. Moreau's coming off a touchdown, but he's been disappointing outside of that. But I do think with all the players on the IR, he'll do a little something, something. So both of those guys are borderline tight end ones for me this week. And I think you could probably do worse. Speaking of the Raiders, we have this beautiful signed helmet from. We're positive that's Devontae Adams, right? It's a seventeen, yeah. Yeah, it's Devontae. Okay, it looks like it looks more like Matt Collins, honestly. Uh, like another, stu- another stupid, another stupid, another stupid Siggy. <laughs> what number is Matt Collins? Is it number seven. I thought you were photographic memory. It's definitely Devontae Adams, guys. We can confirm that. Pristine Auction <laughs> is giving us. This helmet, signed by Devontae Adams, confirmed to give away to you guys absolutely free. We're doing a giveaway based on you going on to Pristine Auction and using code BDGE when you sign up. You don't actually have to buy anything or deposit, but what that will do is 
two things, twofold. We got extra juice for you today. It'll get you into the free raffle. Also, if you do decide to hop into an auction, which are extremely cheap, they've got any kind of memorabilia you could possibly find on that website, any sport that you're a fan of, any player that you're a fan of, this will get you $10 off your first auction as well. So it's a promo code. It's it's a free fucking entry into a Devontae Adams side helmet giveaway, Pristine Auction. Use the code down below. It'll take you right there. Thank you guys, Pristine Auction, and good luck to everyone out there. The Raiders. The Raiders. Oh, we got Cowboys, Minnesota. Cowboys, Vikings. We it's, have... It's big for your power rankings. Yeah, I think the uh, Cowboys actually come out and win this week. Probably... Uh, Dominate the Vikings. Uh, let's see what's going on with the running backs. Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard. Pollard has been looking very, very nice when Ezekiel is not there. Zeke was limited on Wednesday. Uh, we don't really know if he's going to play yet, but there's probably a good chance he does. I think I think he ends up playing. Pollard's in my lineup. I don't think regardless. it affects him at all. Yeah, at this point. Me too. I mean, does it just come down to it that Tony Pollard could be better than Ezekiel Elliott at running? I, I think he might be. At this point, he is. Numbers. Yeah, for He just sure. has way more burst. He's got and, more juice. Yeah. Got more juice, dude. It's all the juice that Yo, um, so much fucking juice. Yeah. Who was the other guy who had With an the empty, empty carton? carton? Yeah. yeah. That all got poured into Pollard. Yeah, I'm starting Pollard for sure. He's like top fifth. He's he's top five if Zeke's not yeah. playing. He's top fifteen if Zeke is playing. Zeke, I'd be a little bit hesitant to throw him into my lineup. I think you gotta be a little bit desperate. He's probably in that like twenty five to thirty range in terms of running back rankings. Cook, you're obviously starting two. So you land, yeah, you get into guys your lineup. Like, I think I'd rather start Elijah Mitchell over Zeke this week. Yeah, yeah I think so too. You wanted right. Zeke in the beginning of the season. I, I remember love you Zeke wanted to draft him. Season. Yeah, I did. You happy you dodged that bullet? Yeah, it worked out pretty well. Yeah. This is a nice fantasy game. You kind of just play all, all the guys that you like. Justin Jefferson, both the tight ends, Dalton Schultz and Hawkinson have been fucking lights out yeah. the last few weeks. Thielen, I think he's playable. I'm not I'm not overly excited about it. He's he's a guy who just goes like fucking four for fifty yeah. every week. Yeah, he's a, a he's a one, one you gotta try and catch his weeks and yeah, exactly. Like I said, if you have, you know, maybe a, a, a Tyreek or a Jalen Wall or something like that on bye this week and you need Thielen to fill in, it's not bad. Yeah, but, a lot of yeah. good wide receivers on bye this week. Yeah. Or hurt right now. So yeah, it's like exactly. Cup, Chase, fucking is both this a, of Miami is this wide the night receivers. Game, by the way? No, I don't think so. It feels like a good game. It should be. I will be watching. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a four thirty game and four thirty. The, the last four thirty game is the Bengals versus the Steelers starting Burrow. You're not starting Pickett. You're starting Mixon. Harris Warren is really tough to decipher right now. To, to decipher. Warren just looks so much better than Harris. Yeah, I think last week was like Harris was like, shit, I know I'm on the hot seat. I'm going to give him my best game ever. You think that was all he had? He's done now? <laughs> yeah, I'm going back to Warren. It's crazy, but it's like almost both of them are startable in a horrible way, you know? Uh, like, I have to start Najee somewhere. Warren, I, I don't know. I don't know if I trust him enough. I don't know if I trust his workload enough right now to, to actually put him in my lineup. Like, it's fun I mean, seeing him make explosive plays, but he never gets in the end zone. He never, like, tops 100 yards, you know? Yeah, it's, it's obviously... A you wish he would be getting there was like an even split in the carries or he was at least getting like 40 percent what's he even what's he even at right now on carries? carries it was 20 yeah. to 9 last week yeah so He's running less routes less red zone ops you know well just i think shy away from this game altogether Dude, whenever the Bengals play the Steelers, the, the, the score is like 9 6. That's crazy. It's like all the time. Higgins, you play. Boyd, you play for sure. I like Pickens. You like Pickens? Yeah. Oh, pick, I thought you said Pickens. Pick Pickens. Pick like, yeah. sir, you're going to have to elaborate on that one. Yeah. I think Deontay Johnson for sure playable. George Pickens is getting more involved, again, in, in the run game. So I think all four of those wide receivers are good. I probably wouldn't touch anyone else. Both the tight ends. I like Pat over I, I Hayden love Hurst. Firemuth, yeah. Yeah, Pat's great. Pat and uh, Pickett have a nice little rapport. I feel like Pat gets like 70 yards every week, just doesn't get a touchdown. He gets like at least eight targets. It's, yeah. It's kind kind of wild. It's nuts. I like Big Patty. Uh, Hurst is definitely more of a desperate play, but I think he's also... I think there's like fucking 10 players in this yeah, game. Yeah, I was going to say, Jamar so Chase just, is out. He's he just gonna, rambled yeah. off a lot of players. Yeah. I feel like an idiot. Start everybody. As long I as feel Jamar like an Chase idiot, but out. come back to me next week when it's 9-6. to six. <laughs> All right. Okay. Plus, big, like the weather there in Pittsburgh, you never know. It could be thunder snow. Big division game. <laughs> Chiefs, Chargers, Isaiah Pacheco. Yep. Steve, take it away. Um, I'll give you some, you know, he had 16 carries, 82. Yeah, no, I'm looking. Week. I'm looking and I'm a liking. All right. Pachecho, um, I'm a fan of him. I did realize that when I researched a little bit about the Chiefs, it does come down to a lot of, you know, game game script. Like if they're behind, he's yeah. not going to be playing a lot. I do expect him to score a lot of points on the Chargers. Terrible uh, run D. Terrible run D, so that's why I may play him. I don't think they'll be playing from behind necessarily. So I think that they'll use him uh, a lot more than Derek McKinnon. And yeah, I, li I like Pacheco here. 
Jay Joe, 15 for 72 and a touchdown on the Yeah, ground. and a touchdown. Two for 16 through the air, something like that. I think we're going to get a nice little game out of Pacheco here. The problem with this is, though, like, the running backs for the Chiefs, like, when it, when they get inside the five-yard line, they love running that thing to Kelsey, that yeah. little, like, underneath yeah. little yeah. thing. They literally like, have 10 different weapons they could use inside the five. Too many people. How did, how did players, how did teams not know how to stop that by now? They run it all the fucking time. you don't time. know when it's coming, man. Dude, it's like, it's Kelsey, it's Noah Gray, it's it's Juju, it's McKinnon, Pacheco, Clyde. You have Tony now there. Yeah, is Juju win. back? Is Juju cleared? No. no? I, uh, I don't think he's going to play this game. Is recovering from a concussion. He didn't practice on Wednesday. MVS didn't practice Wednesday either. I believe that was uh, an, an illness. So oh, probably 50 50 for MVS. Either way, they're um, pretty barren. This is great. All this is just Nicole great Hardman for Tony. also DNP Maybe. practice yeah, they, this week. Um, so yeah, it literally might be like Tony, Justin Watson, and I don't even know who else they got. I don't know there. if it's actually great for Tony or if it's like uh, if it's too much. You know, no, nah, fuck it, let him rip. That's why I, I mean I'm thinking initially. It's just like yeah. he's going to be getting a ton of targets. Yeah, so. I th- well, I think I trust Andy Reid to know that he shouldn't be running routes like fucking Devonte Adams on the outside, right? Yeah. Like use him in over the middle, use him in trick plays, get him fucking yeah. ten of those touches and let him rip. So Tony for sure in your lineup if those guys are out. Um, yeah. Pacheco is definitely startable. You got to be in a deep PPR league to start McKinnon. The wide receivers, everything's up in the air with Fuck. the yeah. charges. Yeah, like even fuzzy. if you get a report on Friday or Saturday, whatever, Keenan Allen ready to go. Keen Are Allen. you gonna start him? No. No, fuck him. Is there a more I, of a punchable guy those guys in the NFL than Keenan Allen? I'll <laughs> fucking punch him. That's what I, I would like, never I, punch Keenan Allen. I think that's Allen, the sentiment, though. My God, bro, you have a toe injury. So the shitty part about this is if those guys are playing, like I'm not playing him, but that also makes me say I can't play the other dudes. Like if it's like, oh, Keenan Allen active, Mike Williams active, it's like he can't, can't really start. play Palmer yeah. or DeAndre Carter. If those two are uh, inactive again, which I, I think if I had to put my money on it, Allen and Williams do miss this game, I'm cool starting Palmer and Carter, both of them. If... Keenan Allen does play though. Keenan Allen or Kadarius Tony. 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 Keenan Allen or Adam Thielen. That's that's like the right range. Okay. Um. Oh God. Oh no! I just don't want to be involved with Keenan Allen. I think I think I might go Allen there just because Thielen has like almost zero upside. He's shown no upside. If there, if you gave me a guy that's had like one game of hundred yards this year, I'd be like, ah, I think I like him more. Keenan Allen or Drake London. I think I got London below oh, below the other uh, Thielen. So Keenan. Keeny baby. All right, yeah. So I mean, if you have Keenan Allen, you're yeah. in a tough spot. A little early in the week right now for us to know for that. Sure, for sure. Um, last game of the week, I believe, this is a Monday night game. San Fran versus Arizona, also up in the air with Kyler Murray. But the running backs, something to talk about. James Conner basically took all the work. Eno yes. Benjamin is not on the team anymore for whatever Crazy. reason. So you're starting Conner. The backfield for San Fran, I, I mean, C-Max and RB1 for sure. I think Elijah Mitchell is super startable. Super start. Yes. He looked good, didn't he? he Did you watch great. the game? 18 carries. Yeah. He looked really, really good. You yeah. have him in our league, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. I, I, knew I, you I dropped him in too. every league. And he, I mean, he. I've liked him from last year. He's a little fragile, though, you know, as you see this year. I think he's a nice compliment to Christian McCaffrey. I was really thinking a good that one McCaffrey punch. was going to take it all. But he looked, he looked spry last week. Week. He looks ready to go. Yeah, yeah he you know does. What's crazy. The red zone opportunities last week yeah. split up seven for Elijah, four for Christian. Yeah, that's just a high number in general. Eleven fucking red zone opportunities yeah. for two they running li- backs. They like him over there. I mean, what's there not to like? You know, besides being a little injury prone, he looks good. I love the coach in San Fran. Love their offense. I don't know why they're still giving Debo's carries from the backfield. That's a little. That was kind of my next question. Yeah. You're starting D Hop. You're starting Rondell Moore. Zach Ertz is out, so we feel like okay about McBride. He's like on the borderline of the yeah, tight end one you, spot. If you had Zach Ertz and like you couldn't pick up another tight end, like that's who you went and got like i would feel fine with that yeah ayuk's been on fire since uh, yeah ayuk's been looking good yeah, too been really since good. jimmy g has took over but like the opposite for debo yeah uh debo is has a significant fall off since I think last C-Mac year really hurt debo yeah it's the last two games he's played in so he missed uh eight and nine or maybe they had a buy in one of those weeks but week seven 6.9 half ppr points week 10 6.1 and he, he had double digit all six weeks prior to that so i don't want to like knock it too much on the recency bias but Debo is definitely like Debo or Ayuk. You got to play Ayuk. Yeah, right? I mean, fantasy is about what have you done for me lately. So I mean, we got to be a little recency bias. I think it's a long season. Um, would you start Ayuk or Debo? Ayuk. Jeez, really? He's getting the receptions. Wow. He's getting the. I mean, imagine that question ten weeks ago. I mean, ten weeks ago with no C Mac there, stealing Debo's uh, running. Uh, no, 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 I'm just saying it's just funny how times yeah. change. You know, recency bias. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I mean, well, what the fuck would you say? <laughs> I just said <laughs> I it. Totally <laughs> <do too. laughs> You just sit there. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I have no take on that. That's every game. Who's going to be the high, the highest scoring player in fantasy uh, this week? Uh, Who puts sh- out the most points in oh, fantasy like this football game. this week? Isaiah um, Spiller, probably. <laughs> um, I was going to go with someone a little different. Non-quarterback. Non-QB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with... Hold on, give me a second. 
I'm going to just go ahead and say Saquon Barkley. Yeah, that would have been my pick, too. Wait, yeah. really? Wow. Against the Lions? Yeah. It's like the obvious one. Maybe Nick Snacks would love to hear that. Maybe it's too obvious, but, I mean, it was that. I, I was going to go with him, probably him or Eckler. Eckler okay. feels too obvious. Like, Saquon feels right. Eckler yeah. feels like it's not going to happen. Cool. Like, every time they play the Chiefs, I'm always like, oh, high-scoring game, Eckler's going to catch, and then it never fucking happens. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, we've gone through every game this weekend. We've gone through all 700 NFL players and told you whether or not to sit them or start them or tweet angry things at them. <laughs> yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure... Hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And we're about to rip off a herd of goats Thanksgiving edition, but that's going to be on TikTok. At BDGE double underscore. See you there. See you never. See you everywhere. Later. Bang!